Hey guys, it's Adam. Um, I wanted to, to try something a little bit different today. I want to try some video recording of just some of the stuff that I do day to day that uh, may be able to help you out in uh, your PowerShell job or whatever you're doing with some uh, PowerShell scripts. Um, today I'm not going to focus really much on PowerShell coding in and of itself, but more of the design aspect of it. Um, I'm starting on a new module um, today called Environment Manifest. And the Environment Manifest is a module that um, I'm working for for a client that goes out and builds an XML file of various configuration items in an environment, such as a development environment, QA, test, prod, that sort of thing. Um, it's meant to be for more the DevOps process of um, getting code shipped from test to QA to prod and to make sure that the changes that we think should be made are actually made to that environment. So it's going to be able to create these environment manifests and then compare these environment manifests to one another. So for example, when we um, change the code in the test environment and we ship it, it goes over to QA, then we want to, we want that check. We want to make sure that it's the same, the same configuration items that we changed in test were applied successfully in um, QA. So I use mind maps a lot for my design process, especially for my modules. You know, there could be um, dozens or, um, you know, sometimes hundreds of different functions in more and more modules. And I use, man I use mind maps to do a lot of that. And this is a good example here. So I've created a mind map called Environment Manifest. That's the main module um, that I'm going to have. And inside of here, I break down the objects inside of that and their relationship to one another. So for us, so far, I just started on this, so it's pretty simple. But in my example here, um, we have manifests, which are going to be the XML files of uh, what's contained, so what's represented in that environment. So for these um, files, we have properties. I have the name property, I have a path property, and then I have um, those functions inside of here. So, you know, I have new compare and save environment manifest. These are the functions that I plan on putting in my module. And the name and the path, uh, these are the properties here. These are what I'll do. I'll typically put these as parameters here to um, pass to these different functions. So I'll have new environment manifest, dash name, that, you know, dash path. So I'll have the properties here on um, a lot of these. And also, here you'll see that I have also configuration items. So there's various attributes that we need to read whenever we're um, um, looking at an environment. So for example, um, right now I'm working on the file um, configuration item. There's various DLLs and XEs and things that we need to make sure that the version has been incremented um, in each environment. And you see here I have a property, so I probably should have put a properties over here as well. Uh, but this is a, sort of a work in progress, sort of a... Um, um, you know, a brainstorming thing that I do. Um, so I'll have every file has a version, a path, and a name. These are the properties that I care about. Um, obviously, if you do a get item on a file, you're going to have a lot more of these, but these are the only things that I actually care about. So I need to find out where the file is, so where to point to it. Then once I know where the file is, I need to get the version out. So that's, for example. And functions. See, I have um, get file configuration. I notice how I kind of abstracted all of these things out into a general configuration item here. Um, I did this because this allows me to add different types of configuration items. I could have just put, um, brought up here file configuration item, but that really limits my um, ability to add new ones. So what I do is I always create a configuration item object and then based on that then I'll make kind of sub objects to uh, um, to fulfill that and I have a few here operating system file share but these are already I'm, I'm not working on these yet and then I have a, an application server and you see these are a uh, uh, this is a one-to-one -one relationship I didn't mention that so like on this application server an application server is basically a VM with a specific name and we have uh, in the client's instance we have a stack so we have various line of business applications we call stacks that are applied to an application server. And since I have um, one stack will always be on a single uh, application server, 
you see here that I kind of have an object, a parent object and a child object. And inside of here, I have then the properties of this object. So that's kind of what a general overview of what, uh, how I kind of do brainstorming on um, um, modules. And uh, what I didn't mention here was the, the application I use. You can use any application to do mind maps like this. Um, I use uh, one called MindMeister. It's a, a web application that's really good. You can do other ones like MindJet is another one and uh, FreeMind. There's a lot of mind maps. But mind maps, uh, other than just uh, PowerShell module brainstorming, you can. it's just a way to map out all your thoughts and before you actually get down to coding because... If you're able to map out your thoughts ahead of time like this, your code will be much more readable, much more manageable, and um, um, will be a lot cleaner to read. So that's kind of how I do the uh, module design process. I hope you guys uh, got a lot out of that.